in this video we're going to take a look at the end of the first test flight series that we did on the EMG-6 with the Polini 250 dual spark ignition installed. Up to this point we have been doing the engine break-in and operating the aircraft with varying RPM ranges in order for the engine and gearbox and all of the components to break in properly. This is the end of about 1 hour and 37 minutes worth of flight test on the aircraft and we're now in kind of a cruise configuration getting close to the end of the flight. We've installed three cameras on the aircraft. We have one that's directly on the tail boom pointing back at the motor just so that we can monitor any problems there. And then we have one camera mounted onto the uh, keel tube that's looking at the engine instrumentation. And then of course the uh, boom mount looking at the cockpit from a wide angle perspective. Uh, we'll give you a little bit of a overview from each one of the individual cameras. On the instrument camera, uh, we've got on the left hand side, lower left hand side is uh, water temperature. The next one up is RPM. You can see here we're cruising right around 57 to 6,000 RPM. Um, and maximum RPM on the engine is right around 7,500 RPM. And then we've got airspeed up at the upper left hand corner which isn't actually working correctly. And then altimeter on the right hand upper side and then we have EGT and CHT and then a G meter on the far right hand side. The engine's been running extremely smooth, and it's amazing how quiet it is. Um, in normal cruise configuration like this, it's as quiet as any four-stroke that I've ever flown behind. The propeller that we designed for the aircraft worked out to be almost perfect. We're going to experiment with some additional uh, propeller configurations to see if we can improve the performance on the um, on the operation of the motor but so far we really lucked out with that we're getting right around 6500 I mean 7500 rpm at full throttle climb which is which is ideal In this flight here, we've been flying around with um, just a standard traffic pattern, but the wind was um, fairly significant, uh, blowing about uh, 12 to 18 miles per hour, uh, and it's pretty crosswind across the runway. And so for the takeoff, we had to take off across the width of the runway, and uh, on landing, we will have to do the same thing just uh, for safety's sake. The airplane's flying very stable, and it's been flying pretty much hands-off um, with just a little bit of control input. The center of gravity on the aircraft is a little bit towards the back, but still well within the envelope. And we calculated that we would need a minimum of 175-pound pilot weight uh, with this current configuration. But we're going to continue to make some modifications to the aircraft and see if we can't uh, streamline the back of the fuselage. We've decided to leave all of the fairings off of the motor um, and the back of the fuselage during the flight test just so that we can have better access and uh, get some video of what's going on inside of the engine compartment. But the uh, overall operation of the motor has been spectacular. Uh, you can see right now in cruise configuration the water temperature and cylinder head temperature have dropped substantially. They're down to about 131, which is not bad, but we'd like to have the motor temperatures up just a little bit higher than that. 
and so when we uh, go to install the fairings we're going to um, install a dampener on the fairings that will allow us to streamline that section of the motor and make some in-flight adjustments to the amount of cooling that can go through the radiator but we've never had um, any uh, indication of overheating with the with the radiator that's installed on the airplane at this point. Uh, there is a thermostat option which is available which will stabilize those temperatures and we will probably test that but not until after we've um, completed the rest of the uh, test flights with the motor in pretty much in its stock configuration. We're trying not to do any modifications at all to the motor during the initial test flights. And so we've been conducting these flights and we're getting close to the end of the flight here and you can see that we're going to have to land uh, slightly crosswind. The airspeed indicator hasn't worked since we began the flight and we've been uh, dinking with it each flight to try and improve it and see if we can't figure out what went wrong with it. But uh, we're still solving these problems. Uh, very controllable um, conditions with the motor and the airframe itself. And simple touchdown at about 25 miles per hour. And taxi right up to the hangar so that we can shut down the engine.